In this episode, we cover the basic server-side implementation for accepting a one-time payment with a custom form. If you're interested in a faster integration path using Stripe hosted checkout, head over to the checkout playlist in the Stripe Developers channel. The payment flow you'll see today for collecting a one-time payment has two steps. First, creating the payment intent on the server, and second, confirming the payment on the client using the client secret for the payment intent. So in this episode, you'll learn how to add an endpoint to your server to create the payment intent. Then whether you're using Stripe.js or React on the web or Stripe iOS or Stripe Android on mobile, you can watch videos for those specific front end implementations that will pair with the code we implement here. So rather than start from scratch, we're gonna jumpstart our server implementation using the developer office hours base sample. Now, if you wanna see how we go from zero to one, check out the starter episode linked in the description. You might also be interested in an episode about working with the Stripe CLI, a handy tool for helping you build and test your Stripe integration. So from the terminal, we're gonna run Stripe samples create developer office hours, and we'll give this one an alias of tutorial. Now we can pick Java and that'll download and scaffold a bare bones project with a simple server and client HTML file for us. But in this episode, we're gonna spend all of our time in the server directory. And then in future episodes, we'll implement the front end to confirm. So let's change into that server directory and open up server.java. So it already contains a route for serving static HTML pages and a skeleton for the webhook endpoint. Now at a minimum, we need one new server endpoint to create the payment intent that will later confirm on the front end. This route will accept post requests as by convention, we're creating a new resource, we're creating a payment intent. Uh, we'll stick with the same naming convention as the Stripe docs and name our route create payment intent. Now the logic in this route is very simple. We'll create a payment intent using Stripe Java's client library to make an API request to Stripe. Initially, we'll hard code and pass just the minimum required arguments, so amount and currency. And this amount value is denoted in the smallest possible denomination for a given currency. So in this case, cents. And this params class comes from the com.stripe.param namespace in Stripe Java, so we'll go import that. Next, we'll make the API call to Stripe. And this could raise an exception, so we'll need to wrap in a try catch. So for now, if there's an exception, we'll print it to the console and return an empty string. And we'll come back to this and clean it up in a bit. Now, rather than return the JSON for the entire payment intent, we actually just wanna return some JSON with only the client secret property of the newly created payment intent. We can either create a static class and build a response object and serialize, but since this is such a small one property JSON object, we can just create a hash map and then uh, render that back uh, with JSON. All right, let's jump into another terminal instance so we can package and start the server with MVN package. And we're gonna call Java, passing it the class path um, to this, this jar file that has all the dependencies built in and the, the class path to our, our entry point of server. Next, we'll experiment with the endpoint using curl to make a direct request to the payment intent endpoint. This is gonna be a post request to localhost 4242 with just an empty JSON object in the request body. Notice this response is well-formed JSON and includes the client secret for the newly created payment intent. Returning to our code, let's talk about this API call for creating a payment intent. So it turns out there's more than two dozen optional parameters available for tailoring the payment experience for your customers. One of those optional parameters is payment method types which takes a list of string values for the payment method options you'd like to allow your customers to pay with. Now, by default, this is set to an array with just one argument and that's card, making this payment intent only confirmable with the card payment method. Now, in practice, you could hard code a list of string values um, or keep calling add payment method type to add all the payment method types you want to accept here. Now in this series, you're gonna learn how to accept a wide variety of payment method types. So let's refactor our endpoint to accept some arguments by deserializing the JSON in the request body. So we'll create a static class that we're gonna deserialize that request data into, and we'll extract an argument for the payment method type. And furthermore, some payment method types only work with specific currencies. So let's allow the currency to be passed from the client as well.
cool. So we'll head back over to the terminal, restart our server and update our curl request to pass in the payment method type and the currency in the request body. Great, now that works. But if we were to try to pass AU Bex debit as our payment method type and keep USD as the currency, note that this fails. In this case, we see in the server log an error message explaining that AU Bex debit only works with Australian dollars. We didn't really get a good error response, so in the future we're going to want to surface those failures in a nice format so that our front end can consistently parse and present errors to customers. So let's render an error response with well-formed JSON in a failure case. So we can import stripe exception from com.stripe.exception and then add a catch for stripe exception and render a user-friendly message like so. In the case of a just generic exception, we'll render back and we'll just sort of like convert that error or that exception into the string value and we'll keep that the shape of the response the same. So this matches the shape returned directly from the Stripe API for client side calls. So it'll make implementing our error handling logic on the clients just a little bit easier to reason about. Now, after restarting our server and attempting to create a payment intent with uh, an invalid combo of payment method type and currency, we now see a well-formed JSON error response. Now, most payment method types complete payment asynchronously. For some, payments completed nearly instantly like cards, but for others, payment can take a few days or even more to complete. And due to the asynchronous nature of the way that money flows through networks, we highly recommend implementing webhooks to automate fulfillment. We have episodes all about how to set up your webhook handler. So let's update this webhook endpoint to simply print to the server log when payment intent events fire. It's quite common to automate things like email notifications, updating your database, pulling from inventory, printing shipping labels, and more as part of this webhook handler. Also worth noting that you could use a third-party tool like Zapier or Ift as a low or no-code solution for handling webhook notifications. For now, we'll simply check to see if the event type is one of paymentintent.created and print a simple status update. From the terminal, we'll restart our server and then test our new webhook logic with the Stripe CLI using the listen command. Stripe listen forms a direct connection from Stripe to this locally running server so that when events happen on the demo Stripe account, they're delivered to the development environment without needing any tunneling software like ngrok. The Stripe listen command accepts a URL to which events should be forwarded. Now, if we successfully create a new payment intent with ideal and euros, we see in the server log that the payment intent was created and we can see in the logs for Stripe listen that the payment intent created event fired. Let's improve our log statement to include the IDs of the event and the payment intent and the status of the payment intent. We'll restart the server and fire another test to confirm our improved log statement. Now we see the ID of the event, the ID of the payment intent and the status of the payment intent. Note that the payment intent was not created with a specific payment method, so its status is requires payment method. We're gonna assign a new payment method when confirming the payment on the front end, again covered in a future episode. All right, so at this point, the server is technically ready to add a front end. However, we'll add one last simple config route for fetching a publishable key so that we don't need to hard code that on the front end. This simple helper is purely for serving our publishable keys when receiving a GET request to slash config. This is a best practice when working with mobile clients so that if for some reason you need to roll your API keys, the publishable key is not hard coded into the production mobile apps shipped to users. That would require that all mobile users install an updated version of the app just to get the new key. So as a quick recap, we added a new endpoint to create payment intents. We, the API call to create a payment intent passes the amount, currency, and the type of payment method we want to allow. We also added some logging to the webhook handler for debugging and look into the future when implementing application logic to automate fulfillment. And finally, we added a quick helper route for returning the publishable key so that we don't have to hard code that in mobile clients. Next, we recommend heading over to one of the playlists that most closely fits your front end implementation. You can sort of pick and choose between different payment method types, and you can use the links in the description or head over to the Stripe Developers channel and take a look at those playlists. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.